What is up, my fellow drone nerds? Summer is right around the corner. You know what that means? There's gonna be a ton of things to do. Water parks, firework shows, picnics, and of course, drone events. If you didn't know that was a thing, it's totally a thing, and they are an absolute blast. I think some of you guys might have gotten into FPV a little bit more recently. Maybe you've never been to a drone event before because there hasn't really been one in a while. But certainly things are looking better, and we are starting to see drone events scheduled again. In fact, we have an event of our own coming up called Rotor Riot Rampage, and it is going down in just over a week from now. We wanted to make this video to go through the five things that you need to keep in mind when you're going to an FPV event. Starting off, number one, probably the most important one. We're not saving it to the end. We want to make sure you hear it. Pay attention to this one. Number one, is you need to know how your video system works and how to use it, how to change your channel and your power level. Something that's very unique to flying FPV versus other types of RC is that your video transmitting system operates on a limited number of channels and you need to share this limited number of channels with the other pilots around you. Something about an FPV event is you're gonna have a bunch of people together. You can only fly so many pilots at once in a given area without video interfering with each other. So you need to share those available channels accordingly. So what that means is you need to first off know how to change the channel of your video system. You do not want to show up to an FPV event and when you go to get in line see that this line is for race band 3 and have no idea what any of that means. Be familiar with the fact that your video transmitter on the drone is going to be set to a certain channel and your goggles are also going to be set to a certain channel. Those need to match up and those need to be on the channel that you are either assigned or in line for or however the event works. So for example, at Rotorat Rampage, the channels are divided up among different adjacent flight lines so that the two flight lines don't interfere with each other. So for example, channels that are close together like channel one and channel two will be split between two flight lines. We're trying to space it up. Essentially, we'll have it divided up so that at one flight line you'll be flying race band channels two, four, six, and eight, and at another flight line, you'll be flying race band channels one, three, five, and seven. Some of these systems, like the DJI system, it works together, and you just need to set the channel in your goggles, and the drone and the goggles will match each other and be on the channel that you put them on. And I think there are even some analog systems that do something similar, like the TBS Fusion system. But if you don't have one of those systems, keep in mind that you'll have to set your drone to a channel and your goggles to a channel. The other thing that you need to keep in mind with regards to your video system is the power level. What does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! There's going to be a limit to how powerful you can set your video transmitter to because airwaves can get pretty messy, so we want to keep power as low as possible. The less gain on your video system means there's going to be less noise. Now, if you go to a drone race, they're probably going to require you to drop your power all the way down to 25 milliwatts. And for most drone race courses, that's all you're really going to need. You're going to be standing there flying some gates, big, open, grassy area. For Rampage, that's not exactly the case. The whole point of Rampage is freestyling around a really exciting freestyle environment. So we're gonna be flying around concrete buildings, metal structures, trees, you name it. We're gonna be freestyling it at Rampage and that means we need a little bit more power than 25 milliwatts. So we are allowing all the pilots to go up to 200 milliwatts. So here's what you need to do if you are coming to Rampage, set your transmitter to 200 milliwatts, set your transmitter to a channel that you plan on using, set your goggles to a matching channel, and know how to change that channel because if you go from one flight line to another, you might need to move from say, race band three to race band four. And that's gonna make sure that you are able to fly with clear video and more importantly, that your fellow FPV pilots also have clear video. You don't wanna be that guy messing up 
everybody's video. Number two, the next thing that you need to know before coming to a drone event is how to pass a fail safe test. This is a very common thing that you will see at drone events, whether it's the famous multi GP international open, the West Coast throwdown, or of course, Rotor Rat Rampage, you're probably going to be asked to have your drones pass a fail safe test. So what that means is you need to show that when your drones fail safe, the props stop. That is the safest configuration, especially if you're gonna be flying an event where there's other people. If you have some sort of connectivity issue and you lose control of your drone, we wanna see that drone just fall. You know, it's a bummer to see your drone just fall out of the sky, but better that than have it fly away. At an event, you're gonna be flying in a given area, whether it's a race course or a rampage flight line, you're gonna be flying in an area where people are prevented from just walking out into. So if you're flying in that area and you fail safe and the drone just drops, it's not gonna hurt anyone, it just might hurt your drone, but that's better than it flying off into an area where it shouldn't be and potentially causing a bigger problem than just having your drone fall out of the sky. So you need to have your drone set up so that if it fail safes, meaning it loses connection to your controller, prop stop and it falls. The way that's going to be checked is at a tech check where you are going to bring your drone with the props off, props off. You're going to plug in your drone you are going to then arm your drone, the motors will be spinning, and then you're gonna do something that feels very unnatural, and you're gonna turn off your radio. And what the inspector is looking for is for those spinning motors to stop. Turning off your radio while the drone is armed simulates you losing connection while flying. And so what we wanna see happen there is for the motors to just stop. We don't wanna see them spool up. We don't wanna see GPS kick in, try to fly home. We don't wanna see any of that. We just wanna see the motors stop. And if that's what happens with your quad, you will get a sticker of approval on your drone and then you will be able to fly that checked drone at any of the events flying locations. Next up guys, let's talk about batteries. Your drones are not going to fly without a fully charged lithium polymer battery strapped to their back. So you wanna make sure that one, you've got a healthy amount of batteries, and two, you know how to charge them. Because even if you bring 20 of them, hopefully you get lots of flying and burn through them all and get to recharge them and keep on ripping. If you need to get stocked up on batteries right now, we're gonna be having a sale on China Hobby Line batteries as they are the official battery sponsor of Rotor Riot Rampage. Even if you do completely forget your batteries, China Hobby Line is providing every pilot at Rampage with a free battery. So even if you miss this video and forget all of your batteries, at least at least you'll have one, but regardless of whether you are flying a China Hobby Line battery or a different brand of battery, just make sure you have a few so that when you finish one pack, you can get back in line and hopefully rip again real soon. But even if you bring six or 10 or even 20 batteries, you're probably gonna burn through them at some point. So you need to know how you're going to recharge them. Now at Rampage, we're gonna have some charging areas so that if you forgot your charger, don't wanna go back to your campsite to get it or just wanna use one of our Ultra Fast Toolkit RC chargers, you can do so. We're gonna have a charging area set up in the build room where you can charge your batteries while you're working on repairing your quad. But what if you need to charge your LiPos and you're all the way out at one of the far away flight lines and you don't wanna deal with going all the way back because yeah, you just wanna keep on flying? Well, in that case, you might wanna consider having a portable power station. Maybe this is a generator if the event you're going to allows it, or maybe this is some really big battery pack. Maybe it's the Relyon Outlaw. At Rampage, we are taking care of this for you and supplying Relyon Outlaw power stations at all of the flight lines. The Relyon Outlaw is essentially a big old battery. It's got an AC inverter built in so you can run anything from laptops to TVs to even refrigerators, but it can also output DC voltage directly, which is perfect for powering, you guessed it, drone battery chargers. So don't worry about heading all the way back. We got you covered with the Reliant Outlaw. You can get charged up right then and there and get back to shredding. So you got your lipo packs, you know how to juice them up. Now the next thing that you wanna think about are your props and your tools. If you're pushing yourself at a race event trying to get your lap times down or pushing yourself at a freestyle event trying to get some perfect dives through teeny gaps, you're gonna be crashing 
and you're definitely going to be breaking and bending props and you may even be breaking some other things on your drone you're going to need to do some repairs so definitely get stocked up on props you're going to be going through a lot of those and definitely bring some spare arms or motors and the tools that you need to do those repairs you know bring all your hex drivers bring your soldering iron we've all been there having to do some field repairs to get the drone back up in the air after you totally biffed it don't be embarrassed if you've been flying for any length of time then you are no stranger to the field repair speaking of props i definitely have to shout out both hq and gemfan for supporting rampage every pilot coming to rampage is getting some props both free when they walk through the door so Again, if you forgot your batteries and your props, we got you that battery and we got you a couple of props to at least get you in the air and then again, maybe head over to the store booth and pick up a couple extra sets. So guys, number five on this list is a new one for drone events and that is know what the events COVID procedures are. This is a new challenge for putting on an event. And so understand that any organization putting on an event wants it to be safe and wants you to have a good time. Hopefully as the world continues to improve, things can slowly get back to normal. But for now, there's gonna be some amount of thinking about keeping everyone safe and healthy that you're gonna to have to do when going to an event. At Rampage, we are so psyched to announce that FPV Exchange has sponsored free COVID screening for everyone at the event. We've also got free masks and we are gonna be following CDC guidelines for wearing masks. Bottom line is we want everyone to be safe and healthy. I wanna ask you guys to respect and care for your fellow FPV pilots and see past the differences that you guys might have on this issue. So if you see the value in these type of precautions and believe that it helps make everyone safe, great. And if you don't see the value in these precautions, I'd ask for you to see the value in at least making your fellow FPV pilots feel more safe and comfortable. Isn't that worth it? We all just wanna go fly our drones and have a good time. So let's do whatever it takes to make that happen. And guys, that leads us to our number six bonus item for that list, and that is to bring a good attitudes no i'm not talking about attitude fpv goggles i'm talking about bring a smile on your face everyone is there to have a good time and enjoy this crazy hobby that we all share together the best part of going to events is seeing people help each other fix their quads after a crash help them dial in their tune share knowledge share your time and help everyone enjoy themselves and that's one of the most rewarding things about being in this community all right guys whether i'm going to be seeing you at rampage in a week or you're prepping for another drone event this summer i hope this list helps you guys prepare for an awesome time at a drone event it is an absolute blast getting together with other fpv pilots and tearing up the skies Leave a comment down below with your best tip for going to a drone event and how to have the best time possible. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to all this, hit the subscribe button. It's free, it costs you nothing. You can even click that bell so we can send you a notification every time we post a video so you don't miss a single one. I'm Ladrib and I'll see you guys next time on Rotor Riot. I wanna play a game. I want to fly a quad at Ready!